What's up guys, BDB SSB. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you a little bit of a um, LED light strip video here, how to do it. There's a couple of static videos out there to, to add static lights, I should say, and you basically have to use some um, vertex paint. But uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply export this cabin here, um, and I'm going to show you how I do it. I just kind of do a decal. You could do an actual 3D model in Blender, but I'm not great at doing the modeling part, so I'm just going to show you how I cheat here and steal some faces. Um, what I always do is start with, I'm going to actually copy this part, pull outside of all the tra or, uh, transforms, and I want to make sure our translates are at zero, our rotations are at zero, and our scale is at one. Um, the reason you do that is because if you don't and you export it, in a different location or a different rotation. It's going to throw all the orientations off in Blender and when you bring it back in it's not going to be where you want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go File, Export Selection and we're just going to call this the Visual. I'm going to do Wavefront. I hit Save. While it's doing that I'm going to show you as well what I'm using. If you simply Google i3D exported for Blender I'm using the add-on by this guy here and I'm going to try to pronounce his name uh, you have to download it from GitHub. It's just a, it's nice because you can actually export shaders um, with them applied, and uh, it also has a nice material selector add-on. I'll show you how to use that a little bit. I'm not going to get into how to download from GitHub or how to in install this guy because uh, Shy Wizard actually, if you go to my Discord channel, you can find that by going to my website from a link on my YouTube channel. And then go into contacts, join my Discord. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with Shadow Wizard, you can simply search him in YouTube, and he's on there all over the place. Um, but he has a tutorial how to um, do that add-on. So anyway, back to what we were doing. We have that guy exported that bought some time while that was happening. Um, we're going to simply go in here and go import, away front, and I'm going to find that big X, bring that in. And we're going to just grab this cab here, we're going to go tab for edit mode, and then I'm going to hit 1 for the front view, tap A a couple of times to unselect everything. I'm going to go to face, and what I want to do is I'm going to hit C, in fact it might work better with box select. I'm just going to grab those faces here, only the front of that um, mirror column, and Actually, I have to see over here because I'll get rid of that guy if I. Oops, I gotta get moved before I do this. Let's see. I just grab the face again. I don't want that one. So I'm gonna hit P to separate, and then I'm gonna choose by selection. I hit Tab to tab out to object mode. I can simply delete the other part of the cab, and now we just have the sections of the little mirror I was talking about. So I'm gonna just simply rename this guy. Um, LED lights. Simple as that. I'm going to go to material. <clears throat> I double click in here. LED lights material. Like so, and like I was talking about, if we scroll on down here to the shader source, it's kind of added on with that add on I was talking about. <clears throat> I'm going to go to my favorites, which is simply the data folder for farming simulator I'm going to go to shaders scroll on down to vertex or no we want static static where did it go oh, around sorry I'm well, losing it vehicle shader okay I want variation of static light <coughs> I'm going to show you in this video here is we can actually come in to this uh, color material zero is where I'm going to put it so I'm going to go one 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 so that's RGB so that's going to make it white because they're all ones and then I'm going to use material zero I'm not going to get into the materials because that's covered in the UDEM video so that's basically saying when we get it color materials zero we want one 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 for white and material 20 okay so now we're going to go into the modeling and we're going to hit I'm going to select that guy we are in edit mode so I'm just going to Hit A a couple of times to make sure we deselect. Hit A to select all. And it's all the way up here. Now the other thing is, let's show you this the add-on part of the um, exporter. If 
if I hit control U it brings up our material selection for, for our U dims so the cool thing is is if I hit set up UV editor it throws in all the grids here um, it won't do the zeros down here the color I'm sorry channels um, that's a just a, a thing I don't think even blender will let you do because you can add these through blender but it's cool that that little add on lets you do it that route the other cool thing is is you can either simply hit your UV sync selection and what that does is when you select something up here see how it's not highlighting it down here I'm sorry this is so small but uh, once you select this and highlight something you can see it's changing down here so you want to have your sync selected and, and like I said if you control U, you can actually do it here as you can see it's highlighted so it is selected if I deselect that you see how it, it drops off there so just a cool little add-on he did as well so we have that selected we're gonna hit all again or A again to select all and I'm gonna hit control U and I'm just gonna do pick U dims so I'm just gonna put it right in it takes a little while because I'm streaming this is loading slow I'm gonna hit color material zero because that's what we changed the color part on and I want to be able to change that material as well I'm gonna hit OK as you can see it popped it down here now there's a couple of things I didn't do yet and I'm going to show you what happens because we don't do it. I'm going to go file save as first of all. I'm just going to save this as an untitled blend file. Um, I'm also going to come in here go to object mode and hit control A and then I'm going to apply a rotation scale lock. That way when we export to blender our Y and our Z isn't messed up and I'm going to go ahead and go file export i3d I'm just going to call untitled we want selected objects and we want to get rid of this output stuff and I'm going to export it now what's going to happen because we have that um, static um, variation and we didn't do the vertex paint as so we're going to get an error as soon as we open this guy so open them up So we're getting no warning for the binary triangles, which that's simply fixed by going save as, se selecting this guy, doing a binary, hit save, yes, close back out. But we're still going to get this, it's going to basically tell us we're missing a vertex attribute for that material. <clears throat> so Air LED lights, Visual 01, doesn't have all required vertex attributes for material LED lights material. So we got to add that vertex paint into Blender to get rid of that. Now, just to show you, um, what I was talking about was I want to also move those lights so that we don't have that air. I'm going to go. Actually, I'm going to close out of here. I'm going to go over to the vehicle itself. I'm going to import that guy. So untitled. So to get this guy to show up correctly, I'm just going to go to here to variation and I'm going to switch it to color mask so that we no longer have that air and you can actually see the visual. But as you see, we have the flickering going on. So the reason for that is because it's stacked right on top of it. Now if we were to actually just take that and move it forward a little bit, 0.01, that will get rid of that flickering so it's just a solid part and what it was is when you cut those faces it's in the same exact spot so it's setting on top of each other and causes some some in fact if I get rid of this it'd probably help a little bit too it, it starts causing materials to flicker so now if I go to zero it's probably going to show a little more yeah right down at the bottom you can really see it right here it just has a little bit of flickering issue so we're going to fix two things in Blender. We're going to go back into here. While we're in tab edit mode, I'm going to hit A to select all. And we want to move it on the Y. It's a Y in Blender. So if you watch up in here, you're going to see GY. If I move it forward, it's negative in Blender. So I'm just going to, once I have G select, I'm going to hit negative 0.01. Enter. All right tab back out so that just moved that origin that's what I was talking about earlier when I was doing the exporting now 
to add in a vertex paint. We don't need to actually paint it because by default, by adding a vertex channel, basically, it's just going to be white. So if we just come over here to Object Data Properties, where you would normally add like UV additional maps for doing uh, some some decal stuff, we're just going to vertex colors, and we're just going to add right there. So that's going to say it has vertex colors now. That's all we have to do. Um, we don't have to even paint because it's going to be white. I'm going to do another video showing blinkers where you actually have to paint it to actually have it blink a different color. So we're going to go File, Export, I3D. I'm just going to add this so it's untitled one. I'm going to Export I3D. <coughs> and I'm going to minimize this guy. So now we import untitled one. We no longer have there. We have the warning for the non-binary, but that's going to get fixed as soon as we save this guy. And you'll see we no longer have the flickering going on. So I'm going to simply cut this guy by hitting Control X. In fact, I'm going to paste it back in. Let's do this. Let's go create transform group, and I'm going to call. I'm just going to have a transform in here called LED or added LED lights. Because or eventually I'm going to actually make blinker lights here. So cut that, paste that, cut that, throw it into visuals, paste it. So now, because we have no normal or I should say specular map, it's not showing that material. Now that's the only drawback of any exporter I know of is you can't do normal and speculator map or specular maps. You have to physically add them still inside of Giants Editor. And until you actually have a proper specular, now you can use default and you can use the I use the reflector so it adds dirt. Um, so now you have the texture which is material twenty and we're getting that um color because I put in a com color material zero. I still go in and add a normal map as well, just a default normal. And we could use the specular off this machine so it would actually share the dirt, but I'm not going to get into that in this video either. And just to show you that it is doing something, when we remove one of these ones, it's turned yellow because you have the red and the green mixed. Um, and material wise, if you hit 2, it just turns it chrome. So we want to make this 20, enter, I don't know why that's fidgety sometimes, enter, so we have white, enter. Now to show you how the static works, if you come on down, there is a light control, as soon as we switch that to 1, we have light. Now if we switch that to say 100, it gets really bright. Um, we're just going to set that actually back to 0 for now, and I'm even going to zero these out for later purposes. Now the blink, if it was in the correct UV, it doesn't matter for just a light control, but to get it to blink, we have to be in the right UV selection. And anytime you'd move in blend or in Giant's Editor, it would actually be blinking with this blink offset set to one, but because the UVs aren't too down, it won't do that. And I'm gonna do another video to show how to do that, and I'll do the coloring of the vertex so we actually get different colored light, because as you see, like I said, because it's white, you're just getting the white um, color because the vertex was just added by default white. Alright, so that part is done for now. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And we're going to map this into the I through the um, XML. So we're going to copy this line. I'm going to open the XML up. And I'm going to go all control and all the way down to the bottom of the I3D mapping. And I already had these I'm cheating a little bit because I was testing a little bit here. So just to show you this is what it looked like by default. I just simply uh, copy that line. I'm going to move it down one. Paste it back in. And we're just going to copy this again. I overwrote control C with that line. I'm going to paste the name in. And we're just going to grab this index path. Control C. Come back here. And we're going to delete this line. So that is our new index path. And then I'm going to look, Control F, I'm going to look for the default light section, which is here. And once again, I'm cheating because I have that there. 
So this is what you'd have by default. I'm just going to grab, I want to use the zero. What that means is that's the first input for the light. So as soon as you hit F, it's going to turn on like your parking lights, this cab light, for example. So I'm just going to copy that line because I don't want it to turn on immediately. And paste it here. And then once again, just grab that um, ID that we used, LED lights. Copy. Paste. Now let me save this guy. And I think I saved this guy. We'll do it again. And open up our game. We should have functional lights on the front of that mirror now. Take a little bit to open here. Okay. So open the game up, and what I'll do is I'll show you that in the shop. If you have any any issues, it's either not going to show up in the shop or it's going to be on all the time. That's, that's because it's not in the right in the right shader section for some reason. So go to the shop, go to Forge Harvesters. Here's the default. As you can see, we scroll in. You know, it's just a black front. We bring the mod to one I've been messing with. You scroll in. You can see it's got that white strip in front. I have it purchased already. I'm going to tab into it. Scroll in really close, you can see, it's hard to tell, it's not really close, it has like a little bit of a light touch here, and it's just white now. As soon as I hit F, it lights up like a light. It's in the first, like I said, it would see how the cab light turns on at first clip as well. And the parking lights will turn on, I believe, yeah, it's about here, it's like a parking light. So, another little trick, if we come down here, I want to show you, is if you come in here and actually type in, and intensity equals 100 just to show you the extreme and hit save come back in the game and actually let's go in and change the time and this is easy to control right on the, the website GTX has so change the time go and reload this guy now I turn this on See how extremely bright that is, so that's intensity 100. Or if we go back and change this to say intensity 0.5, save. It's going to be a little bit of a crispier look here. Yeah, so it just gives you a nice little dim LED if you wanted. So that just goes to show you just changing that light node and shader like we were doing inside of it here, this light control. The difference between 1 or 100 or 0.5 um, so yeah that pretty much just kind of shows you how to add the strip itself and how to use the static bearing in the vehicle shader um, I'll go ahead and stop this video like I said I'll do another one later showing how you can actually we'll separate those guys to the left and the right and actually add in a color in the vertex paint um, so you can use it point. but uh, until next time we'll see you guys later if you have any questions as always uh, shoot me a message in uh, YouTube or you can join my Discord as well and I can uh, usually get to the local there. We'll catch you guys later. Thanks.